Oh man, here they come again. Here they come again. This still has skin on the skull. Abductions do run in families. It's generational. They are interested in bloodlines and genetics. And these are bloodlines they have been cultivating for at least several decades, maybe for much, much longer. Uh, perhaps, you know, thousands of years. Um, and so there is a generational component to it. But the overlap between the spiritual uh, side, the paranormal type side, and the alien abduction side it's it's extraordinary and very much underappreciated, and um, people do not want to put these two things together. It's all the same thing. These things are all on the same team. They're all working, you know, together for each other. Um, if you talk to Heidi Hollis, well, let me back up. It took me until I was about fifty four years old when I was waking up and just being completely conscious. They got to where I was conscious, and they were trying to come get me. Um, it actually got to where they were trying to come get me during the middle of the day while I was wide awake. I've actually had a couple of very strange incidents uh, during the middle of the day. People like to say, oh, this is just a dream or, you know, this is just um, some strange psych psychological happening. And, and that's just simply not true. But um, where was I going with that? Oh, you know, just. Um, yeah, completely lost track of where I was going. Hopefully you were paying attention. You I were, was paying attention. You were drinking coffee. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I was paying attention. Uh, the... Oh, the warfare. Yeah, the spiritual warfare and the overlap. So people do not want to understand. So they want to believe that these things are aliens from outer space, that they're extraterrestrial. Um, and I can just tell you what I believe. I can't say that this is 100% true or with 100% certainty, but I can just tell you what I believe. I do not believe they're from outer space. Um, I think they're from right here. I think they have been here for a very long time. I think the greys are an, uh, like a biological android that were our hybrids probably themselves. They were created to interact with us. Um, behind the greys, you have the mantids and the reptilians. They're actually kind of more in charge of the whole, of the whole abduction, uh, show. And it's, uh, their sole purpose is this hybrid breeding program. And, um, Behind them, you get straight up demons, straight demons. And people will come into my spaces and go, what do you mean a demon? What's a demon? You know, this and that. They don't want to even believe there's any good or evil anymore. Um, people cannot understand that the demons are actually in the hierarchy on the negative side of this phenomenon. There are demons. And by the way, there are beings much stronger than demons um, I've only encountered one of them. The power from this being was unspeakable. So there are beings that are even higher up this food chain than demons. And I don't know what's after that. But um, these, I think that these, um, the aliens, for lack of a better term, were created to more easy, more easily interact with us. Um, because this is a very physical phenomenon. These are physical spaceships. They come get physical bodies. They are taking physical eggs and sperm. They are making physical hybrid beings who will be capable and are capable of living on the planet. Um, so they have this, they have an entire agenda. Um, and it can be very difficult to understand well, how, why doesn't, why, why does a demon need a spaceship? Well, a demon doesn't need a spaceship, but a demon cannot interact with us very easily at all. And so I believe these creatures were made, um, they are nuts and bolts creatures, even though they are very metaphysical. Um, you know, they're able to phase in and out of these uh, dimensions, for lack of a better term. And um, I think they are here to, to do the interaction with us and to carry out whatever this agenda is um you know they tell us what the agenda is by the way i don't know if we can believe what they're saying but um they're creating these hybrids to seed them on the planet and 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 usurp uh humanity on the planet um in the meanwhile you have this very strange um spiritual warfare going on through these beings it was through these beings that i realized what are they doing with my soul 
How do they have the power to take my soul out of my body and to put it somewhere else? And that is a very frightening thing. That is what made me question my faith, question Christianity. Wait a minute, how can this being, and, and it's technology that they're using. They're using technology to remove me from my own body. That is something that should be the purview of God himself, right? But no, these beings are able to do it. And so that is a whole other rabbit hole that I'm not sure you want to go down, but I, I want to go down at all. Like, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to, I just got to tell you that what everything you're saying I, is resonating to me, like everything. The, so the idea of these beings be able to pull your soul out of your body, if we look at it in a different lens, uh, through practical means that I'm, everybody listening to the show has heard of, and I'm sure you have, uh, astral projection. Uh, it, it, that's something that you choose to, well, not always, but that's something that, that people can choose to do. They practice it. They try to become in the astral plane. And one of the things they talk about is uh, how they can choose to leave their body and go back into their body. So if you as an individual can do that, and, and theoretically God can do everything, could there be dark forces? Let's just say you're not a dark person choosing to do that. And there's God who is, is ultimately able to do anything. Could there be dark forces out there that are very powerful? Yes, we've established that. Could they have the ability to do that as well? Why couldn't they? Why couldn't they? they especially when we're talking about fallen angels and these, these beings who have been around since creation, they watched it happen. They saw how God did these things and then they rebel. Like, why wouldn't they have the ability to do that? And then you were talking about the hierarchies. Like, there's hierarchies with order, but there's also hierarchies within the, the this this side of things. Like, there's, say, just simple terms, good and evil. On the evil side, there are separate hierarchies. If, if who Who in the world can put a whole prison of inmates into one room and say, guys, get along and figure it out? It doesn't happen. And so within that realm, there are hierarchies of warring fractions. They're on the same team as in, we don't, we're don't we against the big guy, but I am better than you. No, you're not. I'm better than you. There, there's definitely that. And that filters into people's experiences. And so I, I, I don't know where I went with that. I'm super ADHD, but I just, <laughs> you said something, I interrupt you and I'm sorry. <laughs> don't be sorry. I get uh, tired of rambling. I, I'm just pulling things from so many places. This is not a coherent story. And I apologize for that. Um, you totally nailed it. So I look at it, I, I liken it, of course, from the job to a drug cartel. You know, you have the head of the cartel, uh, like Juan Pablo, and then you've got your shot caller who's in some prison in Central California. And you've got 50 gangs underneath that shot collar, and they're all trying to move dope money and guns, and a lot of times human trafficking as well. And they can be rival gangs. They can shoot at each other. You know, they can um, try to um, take each other over. But the bottom line is, is they all have the same agenda, and that is to make money and to move the dope money and guns. Yes. Um, and so it's very much like that. And I think that's why there's a lot of confusion. It took me a while to realize I had two or three different things going on with different creatures, um, maybe with different um, modus operandi. It, it's just, and it can be very confusing. Um, but that's the thing that people will not, and, and these people in ufology, no matter how many times they are told there, this is spiritual warfare. This has to do with the ultimate destiny of the human soul. That's it. That's the game. It, that's what they're here for. Well, what does an alien have to do with the destiny of a human soul? Well, I don't know. Why are they taking my soul out of my body? What are they doing? Why are they threatening insiders? These so-called high-level insiders will go to their deathbed before they will give up information because they are being told that these so-called aliens have control over the afterlife. And I can tell you, I have witnessed a uh, part of this process myself. And so it's downright frightening. And this is what just ripped my whole worldview out from under me. When I realized that these creatures abducting me out of my body, able to transfer my soul, also working on this hybrid breeding program, you know, what does all of this have to do one with the other? Um, it, it, it just, I mean, it almost killed me. 
when I just went, what the ever loving hell is going on in this world right now? This, I was not prepared, um, you know, for everything I saw and everything I went through. Yeah, man, I, I can imagine. Um, so you, you kind of mentioned here uh, a little bit ago about the hybrids to usurp humanity. Um, I'm tracking with you. Uh, I would like for you to maybe go into that a little bit more as far as your perspective as to how that unfolds, why, um, just in general, go into it more. Because that, that was a statement I think the audience might have caught their ear and would like for you to maybe go into detail a little bit more on on that angle of things. Yeah, sure. So again, this is this was happening over a period of a couple of years. And maybe about this time last year, October or so of 2022, I'm really putting this all together and I'm realizing, oh my gosh, what's actually happening and all this kind of stuff. Um, and I'm just almost absorbing information because I can't say the aliens told me, you're going to hear abductees. You probably already have. I don't know how many abductees you've talked to or if you, or, or, or oh, who's been on your show. Healthy Has it amount. Been a lot? Yeah, there's been a healthy amount. Yeah. A lot. Okay. So you're going to have abductees telling you, oh, they told me this or they told me that. That does not happen with me. I have just been in their environment so many times. And, and I say everything they do is a double-edged sword. They took me so many times that all I had to do was start paying attention. And it's a very telepathic environment. And part of what I was being tested and trained for was to actually um, conceal my own thoughts and intentions from them. I was actually being trained for that and tested for it. And so being in a telepathic environment, they are trying to hide themselves from me as well. And, it, and just being there too many times and really started paying attention, I'm now absorbing this stuff. They have never told me this. So I end up coming out March or April with my own um, ideas on what was going on. I start coming across the abduction research in about March or April of last year. And I think the very first thing I read was by Carla Turner, and it was called Masquerade of Angels. Um, I'm not sure if you've ever heard of the abductee, Ted Rice, but um, he's fantastic. He's in his 80s now. Um, I start reading this story and I'm basically reading my life. I, everything that was happening to me, I'm now reading in this story. And he's going down to some descriptions of things that, that happened to me that you cannot know unless you've seen it or unless you've been there. And so I start reading the abduction research and I start realizing, oh my gosh, these people are saying the exact same thing of these conclusions that I have already come to. And so most abductees, and not all, but most of the abductees have used hypnotic regression to recover memories because many abductees were given these screen memories. Um, it's something like 85% of abductees return with the thinking that they're on a spiritual journey and that this is maybe a good thing and we're just helping them with their genetics and all this kind of stuff. They they feed, you know, maybe a dozen different, um, it, it's propaganda stories to abductees as to why they're doing what they're doing and why they're doing it in secret, by the way. Um, and so much of the abductee research from Carla Turner and uh, David Jacobs has been done on abductees who have received hypnotic regression. I have never uh, retrieved a memory through hypnotic regression. So when I'm talking about any of my experiences, I'm just, I wake up and there I am. Sometimes I'm having you know, maybe a 50 to 75% uh, degree of consciousness, and it can go up to 100%. And by the way, it's not like a dream. It's much more like being under anesthesia. And so um, I'm not, I'm going to write this down so I don't forget where I was actually going down this rabbit hole. So they're using mind control. And it's got to be the same portion of the brain that anesthesia targets because it's very similar. So the way it feels is if, let's just say that you're going to get a tooth pulled, and if you've ever had maybe a volume or something to go for some type of daytime surgery, they want to give you something to kind of calm you down while you're walking in. They might give you a volume or a Xanax or something. So you can be walking into the dentist office with just under a little bit of haze, 
you're going to get a tooth pulled. You really don't want to be there. You don't want to get a tooth pulled, but you know you have to do it because it's for your own good. And so you get into the dentist chair and they probably load you up with some, a greater amount of anesthesia. And then imagine that anesthesia just running through you maybe a little bit too quick or they didn't give you quite enough. And you actually wake up with a dentist pulling your tooth. Um, that's pretty much how it goes for me. And interestingly enough, there's going to end up being a correlation between uh, people who run through anesthesia very quickly, because I do in 3D real life, I run through anesthesia very quickly, and people who are able to wake up and kind of break out of their mind control. Um, and so it's very similar. It's not like a dream. And a lot of people will report things like dreams because there's no other language for it. And when I'm not 100% conscious, it can feel very much like I've taken a Valium and I'm walking to the dentist chair. And so um, abductees in general are filled with screen memories and they're filled just with, with things that didn't actually happen. And so many abductees have gone for hypnotic regression. There is some controversy over this. If you don't have the right uh, regressionist, they can fill you with all kinds of nonsense that maybe didn't actually happen. So it's very controversial and it's why I've never done it. Um, however, it's very important to note that when I started reading the abduction research, what they were saying was matching up with what I had already kind of come to my own loosely held conclusions because I'm not sure there's 100% in this field. And so what they, the aliens, the so-called aliens, are telling abductees, and these, again, memories are covered almost always under hypnotic regression, is that these hybrids are being made to replace us, homo sapiens sapiens. They're going to replace us. And they, and I'm going to tell you my own conclusions. So my own conclusions during this time is that they were trying to find a combination of gray alien and human uh, DNA that can still be a telepathically controlled because they're all kind of hooked up into this hive mind control system. You, you can't have your own independent thought. Um, it's very difficult for them to hide any thoughts from each other. They're, it's almost like an AI computer system or something. And so they're looking for the combination of human and gray alien. And in my opinion, they're looking for the combination that can still house a human soul. And so this is a very delicate process. It has taken many, many years. Um, in the very beginning of this process, they were um, not very successful. They're, they're, the um, young were not thriving. Um, they were not making it. And so it has taken decades. People like to ask me, well, if you know they wanted to take us over, they would have done it a long time ago. Well, no, they wouldn't have because they couldn't. <laughs> but that's what they're working toward. And so the whole idea is to replace almost all humans, the majority of humans, um, with hybrids. And these hybrids are much more easily controlled than we are. And um, they're basically breeding out the human spirit, um, love, empathy, our desires for freedom, our desire for autonomy, our desire for God. Um, they're breeding that out. And so imagine how long it would take and how many times it would take to find these exact perfect genetic um, matches to get what they want. And what they want, it, it almost seems like, um, okay, I'm just going to tell you what I think they're doing. I'll spit it out. So what I think they're doing is I think they're trying to trap the human soul inside these hybrid bodies. And so... If you believe in reincarnation, that might be one thing. If you don't believe in reincarnation, it doesn't really matter. Our souls come from somewhere, and they are put into our bodies. And the soul has to genetically match the body. I don't understand the science behind that, but it's what re I've read researchers tell me this. There has to be a genetic match between the soul and the physical body. Um, and so if they can find... If they can develop a hybrid that has enough human DNA that can still seat the human soul, but yet still be controlled, 100% controlled by them, 
they have developed an ultimate soul trap. 